On this episode of Pain Society, we're going to attack our project Honda Civic and use Eastwood's OptiFlow Primer System. We'll be grinding some paint, blocking out some panels, putting down our epoxy paint, doing some body repair, and some urethane. What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Well, today we have a very special one for you guys because we're going to take our Honda Civic project that needs a little bit of work and some primer and we're going to put to the test and use Eastwood's OptiFlow primer system. We have an epoxy and we have a urethane as well. Let's see what else the kit has to offer. So with a wide variety of products, this kit is designed for you guys in your home garage to get you one step closer to getting it into the body shop. We know how restoration projects can be. They can take many months to many years. And sometimes when that metal rusts, that's something that we don't want to happen. So this is a good way of getting your car protected while you work on it. That's why we have the epoxy and the urethane to help us out in between our body work to seal up our metal and get it one step closer to maybe moving it to the body shop without the use of a spray gun and a whole spray system. We can use it with ease just by rolling it on. And we're gonna test it out today and see if it lives up to what a regular primer system can do with a regular conventional gun. Now this is the whole kit. Everything will be included here that you see on this table and it's enough to get your whole entire car done. Now first up, what we're gonna have is our sanding, which you're gonna to need to do before you actually go ahead and sand. Now, it comes with a Dura Block. Now, Dura Block uses the Stick It sandpaper. And we have a wide variety of sandpapers right here. I've already gone and tested out the uh, 120 and the 220 grit. Now, it also comes with your uh, P400, P320, and yeah, the P180. Uh, now, the way that this paper works is very simple. So right here, I have my P220, and I'll just go ahead and measure just about how much it is, and I'll just go ahead and rip it right at that spot, or you can cut it with some scissors. Now, this is a stick it, so when you peel the backing off of it, okay, it's simply going to stick right to your Dura block. This is where you're gonna start the process by going ahead and sanding the car down or chemically stripping it or using another tool, which we'll get into. So that's the first step. After you have everything sanded, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and mix your primer. Now, these cups, uh, will be used for your primer. You can also use it for a wide variety of different paints as well for your project. It comes with a convenient top, so if you want to go ahead and store any base coats that aren't catalyzed, you'll be good to go using these mixing cups. Then we get to the guts of the actual system. Now, before using any of these paints, it's really, very really important to look at the instructions. I went right over the instructions and got familiar with them a few times just so I can make sure that I'm following it perfect. And it's got pictures, which I like, because I am a visual learner, okay? Coupled with some very easy to read instructions, it's a pretty straightforward system. Now, the way that Eastwood wants you to do it is it wants you to get your epoxy on the surface first. So for that, you'll have your epoxy catalyst and your epoxy primer. Now, these two will mix up, and we'll show you how to do that. Now, again, this is enough to do a full size car and you're only gonna mix what you need because you got about 20 minutes before it starts to kick. So your epoxy would come first and then we'll move on to our primer. Now before we move on to our urethane primer, it's recommending that we use a body filler over our epoxy. So this is not included with the kit, but you can go ahead and pick up this body filler, any body filler to go ahead and use it before the primer uh, system. Now, this primer suggested to go on over the epoxy. Now, of course, if you don't have any bare metal spots, you can use it over some body filler if you like. But we're going to go ahead and follow the directions just the way it said. And it's saying to use this over a 400 grit scuff surface. So that would be the epoxy in that case. So this is the primer. and We'll get to this on the project. Now, like any car, it's going to be hard to get that roller into some tight areas, which is why they have a 2K 2K spray can, meaning it's two parts. It's got the um, bladder inside that holds the catalyst. And when you take the red cap and pop the bottom, it will break open that bladder and release it to the rest of the can. And from there, you have a few days until it starts to harden up, depending on the temperature where you're at and where you store it. So we got the epoxy and we got the urethane primer, which is the same thing that would be 
in that uh, gallon that we roll on, but in a spray can form for hard to reach areas. Then the kit brings two uh, guide coat in aerosol form, and this is to show us our lows and where we sand it, and we'll get more into that in the video once we have our um, urethane uh, gray primer down. Now the guts of this project is the roller and the roller system. Now looking at it, it does not look any different from a paint roller system you would have to paint your house, which is kind of user friendly. Uh, it's got 12 packs liners, so you can kind of switch them out. Now it's gonna have two different types of uh, roller system. It's gonna have one for small areas and one for your larger panels. Now to couple with that, it's gonna have your larger roller and it's gonna have your smaller roller. Now these are very, very, very thin. The nap on them is very, very minimal. So it looks like it's gonna go on very, very easily. Now these are gonna be one time use only because yeah, they're gonna harden up and dry. You're not gonna be able to use them. So you wanna make sure you're ready to prime and you're not actually just trying to test an area out because you will lose a roller once it hardens up. Now the smaller roller seems to be more of a foam type of material and a little bit softer, but good to get in those small areas. Nice, smooth roll. And we'll put it to the test in just a little bit. So here's the project. This is our Project Civic now. It's got a lot of panels that do need full primer. And it's got some panels that actually have some decent clear on them that we can go ahead and just scuff. Now the panels that we're gonna be uh, putting our attention on for this project are the fender. This is an aftermarket fender. And then we have the original roof that the clear is completely gone. And then we have the trunk right here that just needs <laughs> some primer. So we're gonna start this project off and divide it into three panels. Now this car has some good clear on it still, but some of the panels need attention. The three panels we're gonna go ahead and work on are the fender, the roof, and the trunk. Now, it's always recommended that you start off with bare metal so you have a nice and even substrate so you know that what you're putting on is your work and you can trust it. In this case, we're gonna strip this down because this has rattle can spray paint on it and we can't trust it. In the case of the roof and the trunk, it is the original paint, so we'll actually be showing you the method of sanding that one down. Now, in the case of stripping it like the fender, we have a few options. We can go ahead and chemically strip it, we can hand sand it, or we can use a machine stripper, which is what we're gonna try out right now. Now you wanna make sure that the panels next to the panel you're stripping are protected. We can use some duct tape for that. And we'll protect the door by using a duct tape because it's much thicker. We just need to make sure we remove it in time and don't let it sit on there all day. Now in the case of the stripper, this is a machine we're gonna use. Now it claims it's gonna take off the paint really easily and it comes with a few different discs that you can try. Now it has a little bit more aggressive. We're starting off with 40 grit, but I don't think we're gonna go that aggressive just yet. We're gonna go ahead and start with the 120 grit disc for stripping. And then if we need to finish it off to make it smoother, we can use this one. A quick unboxing and let's see what it has inside. Oh, it's got some weight to it. If we take off the plastic, it's got some weight, like I was saying before, some spots for our handle to go on and make it a little bit easier to maneuver. All right, so we got our 120 grid on there. So let's go ahead and let's get to work. Works pretty good. Ooh, a little hot. Works pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let me try the 40 grit. A little slow. Uh, I don't need the metal this smooth. But uh, let me see how well that forward grid, if it makes it too, too rough, then we'll switch back to the 120. Well, there it strips it a lot quicker and it's still not really warping the panel, so that's good news. Let me go ahead and strip some more. So the machine stripper made easy work of it. Although it did take a little bit of time, we cut a nice strip all the way around. Now this is a little bit too rough, so we're gonna go ahead and refine it. So when our primer lies on it, it's got a smoother finish to lie on. 
and that way it doesn't shrink back too much. For that, we're gonna switch out to the 120 finishing drum. And as you can see, the uh, duct tape does a pretty solid job of protecting that panel. So we got our fender all done. Now I showed you an application where we're stripping it down to metal, just in case you don't trust what's underneath it. Now on the application on the roof, we know that this is original paint. There's no bondo or anything that will get us into trouble. So we're gonna show you this application where we just sand and smooth it down. Now to do that, we're selected to the P220. We might wanna go a little bit coarser, but let's see what the 220 does before we go ahead and go coarser. We just wanna go ahead and level it off. It doesn't look like it has any damage, just needs to be smooth. Now when we sand it, we're gonna go in a cross hatch pattern. That means we're gonna go one way, okay? And then we're gonna go the other way, pretty much like an X. And we'll kinda of follow this whole entire pattern on the whole entire roof just the best we can. And we're looking pretty much just feather out and smooth out the paint and get it ready for our epoxy primer. Areas around the trim, we're gonna use a maroon scuff pad. Now this is equivalent to around 400 grit and this will give us enough adhesion on all of our edges. So it's just simply go around and scuff it up where the sandpaper is a little bit too big to get to. Now with our trunk, we can tell the clear coat is completely deteriorated. Now one option is to take it down the metal like we did on the fender, or the second option, we're gonna treat it like the roof and just simply feather it out. Once again, if you have a whole bunch of body filler and you don't know what's underneath, it's best to take it down the metal. In our case, we know the history of the car and we know this is original paint. So once more, we're gonna start by feathering it out on our block with 220 grit. Now, if you have any sort of clear that's still kind of there, you want to make sure you get that off. And there we go. Now, it looks like this trunk has a lot of high spots. Maybe from underneath, when they go to close the trunk, maybe some objects were poking up. We're not going to worry about it for now. We can adjust it once we get into the primer stage. We're also not going to prime this area since it's still good clear, okay? We only really need to focus on is the top. Now we're getting really close to primer. Now before we're primering, we're gonna use a pre-painting prep. I'm also gonna use a microfiber cloth because it really pulls off the contaminants and it doesn't get soggy and useless like a paper towel would after a few passes. Now, while running my hand over the panel while cleaning it, I noticed that the metal ones are a little bit high. Now, these I don't really think we're gonna be able to get to and fix in primer, so we're gonna use like an extension here and a hammer and just give it a slight tap. And this will help keep it low so we can fill it later. Feels much better. Feels a slight bit low, which is what we want because you can use a little skim coat of Bondo to make sure it's nice and flat. And don't worry about ruining those microfiber cloths. I use all of these for painting. I simply just throw them in the wash, grab some degreaser, and they're good to go. So we have our epoxy and our urethane primer and we're ready to get started. Now our epoxy primer is direct to metal, DTM. Now we're gonna be using this on the fender, on the roof, and on the trunk. Now we could get away with just using our urethane primer on the roof and on the trunk since we really don't have much bare metal showing. If you plan on just using a urethane for areas you didn't take down the metal, you need to use the epoxy spray at least on the bare metal spots. And that would be spots just like this. 
But if you really want a long lasting repair and a strong holdout, it is best to use epoxy on the whole entire car. It's just that much stronger of a primer. When followed up with the urethane, you'll get a much nicer finish. We're gonna go ahead and pop these open and I'm gonna show you a little trick to mixing and pouring these without making a mess. Now these are Dito's gallon size mixing units. Now you can get these online. We happen to have some really old ones laying around that weren't being used. Now we'll simply just put it in here. Now there's a lot of sludge at the bottom here so it can be a real pain to mix. Now we'll just simply take off this top little collar. Then you get yourself a drill motor and slowly mix it. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and mix our epoxy primer with the catalyst. Now this mix is one to one. That means for one part of epoxy primer, it's one part of epoxy. We find one to one, which is right there. And then we're gonna go up to the first six for our epoxy. And then it's gonna be equal half, an equal part. It's gonna be the other six right there for our catalyst. really mix it up good now it says do not use any more epoxy than what you can use in 20 minutes that means it's gonna start to kick up pretty quick and you're not gonna be able to roll it anymore it's gonna start to probably get really jelly now I've done no special fancy masking I want to make sure I can do this job with a bare minimum okay so I've only ran a couple pieces of tape around the exterior of where we're gonna be priming so let's go ahead and see if really we can get a nice prime out of this roller. Now we're gonna start off by taking one of our liners out and going ahead and putting it into our tray. We are gonna use a smaller roller for the fender since it does have some contours that might be a little bit tougher with a bigger roller. First coat it says just get it on there. We don't wanna go too heavy. We just wanna get the primer on the surface. Now for the roof, we're already using our bigger roller to cover more surface area. Don't worry about trying to get it completely covered on the first roll. There's gonna be some see-through spots. You can tidy these up with the second and the third coat. I'll switch to the small foam roller for the edges. A little bit softer and it conforms better to these little body lines that we have along the roof rail. I'm learning quick that a little product actually goes a long way. Now we'll go ahead and pour some more epoxy primer and we'll attack our second coat after 30 minutes. Now we're not looking to build too much with our epoxy, so we're just gonna do two coats. That should be more than enough. So our epoxy has been drying for a good couple hours now 
and you can see it's dry to the touch but we really need to wait the four days before we can continue with the body work or the urethane primer now the directions will tell you that we can go ahead and do the body work right over this with sanding with a 320 or 400 but once we do our body work we're going to need to epoxy over it then wait our four more days and then go ahead with the urethane all right so it's been four days we really want to make sure we're following the directions and doing it just as they say so we can leave any sort of issues to user error and not the actual product now it is hard as a rock it is good to go if we look at the roof as well it's good to go so what I'm gonna do now is I'll tape off my edges and we're gonna go ahead and start the sanding process. So we're right here in the process where it wants us to put the guide coat on, which we have right here, and then we'll sand it with the 320 grit. Now when you put your guide coat on, it can be kind of misted on just like this. It doesn't need to be completely black. Now what this mist black will do is get into all the little crevices and it's gonna show you your low spots. Let's see if we have any low spots here. Okay, so the epoxy has been sanded. Now this is really gonna show us what's going on. Let's identify what we have here, okay? So anywhere where the guide coat still is, is a low spot. So for instance, you can still see the guide coat right here and a guide coat right here. That will represent a small dent, okay? Everywhere else looks pretty good. Now, right here is a high spot. It's an abrupt high spot, just right in the middle of nowhere. It's a high spot. And that's when the actual block, right? It hit the top of it. Now, this is not a high spot. That's because the contour of the fender. So I was standing here, it was hitting the contour, okay, where the fender was a little bit wider in this area. So you kind of have to recognize, right, where your highs and where your lows are. When it's something just like this, that's kind of just abrupt, you know it's a high spot. And use your hand, I can feel it. This, I know it's smooth. So let's show you how we fix these. I'm just gonna take my hammer and my socket and just lightly tap down on it. I need to make it a little bit below the surface so my filler can go ahead and make a nice smooth flat surface. Now I don't feel it getting hung up. My hand just kind of smooths right over the surface. Now for this, we have two options. We have a premium uh, body filler. It's gonna be a little bit thicker and heavier. And then we have our glades. Now this area is so smooth, it doesn't need much of a fill. So I'll go ahead with our glaze. Just a little quick wipe. And if you get a little over ex excess, that's okay. Okay, right there. And then this one over here, I'm gonna kind of bridge it together. We're gonna make a bigger one. Okay, that way it's gonna be smoother. I don't have to worry so much. We'll allow this to dry for about a good 15 minutes and then sand it. So we got that roof all sanded and I gotta say, I'm really happy because there's no dents or anything that needs any body work. No low spots, just a couple areas where we have the original paint, which is fine. That means it's been feathered out and smoothed out pretty good, but we didn't hit metal. So that's not a problem. Now, if we take a look at the trunk, it's a little bit different situation. Although it does have all these kind of burn throughs, they are flat if you feel them with your hand. There are a couple that do need a little bit of filler. You can see right here where the guide coat is still showing through and we got metal high spot right here. So we'll tap this down, add a little filler to these and get that filler on the fender and on the trunk, sand it down.
So I'm ready to epoxy again. Now the reason why I'm going to epoxy again is because I have metal showing and I don't want to cover that with the urethane because urethane doesn't have metal coating properties in it to protect it as well, okay? Plus that epoxy is much more stronger. All my body work's been sanded with up to 220. So what we're gonna do is the roof is fine, right? But the uh, trunk is gonna need some epoxy again. I can't put that urethane back over it. So instead of using the roller, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna use. So the kit comes with the 2K Euro uh, spray epoxy primer, and it's gonna have that um, bladder that you puncture on the bottom using that red cap. And this is gonna be the same as that same uh, epoxy that we used that was out of the can. So to use this, let me show you how. To use this, what you wanna do is take that cap, right? And you wanna press it on like a hard surface like the ground. And I'll put that cap right on that little uh, stem right in there. And I'll push down. And listen for the click. <clears throat> All right, so it does take a little muscle, but once that click happens, that means that we've broken the bladder inside and now the catalyst and the epoxy primer are now mixing okay and you can get a good two to three days maybe longer if you keep it in a cooler environment but this will eventually harden up and you won't be able to use it anymore And there you have it. This is the panel after the epoxy in the rattle can. Now we're gonna allow this to dry a few more days, make sure it's nice and hard. Now, if you are gonna take your car to the body shop, from this point, it'd be fine. The metal would be protected, you'd be good to go. Now the same thing over here, all of our metal in our body filler is protected with the epoxy, so we are good to go. And we'll allow this to dry just a few days, and then from there, we'll go to the urethane primer to get that build and to get it ready and closer for our paint job. Okay, so we're back here four days later. Now, I could have probably just done two or three days because on the uh, fender, that epoxy that we had used had dried already. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get ready for our urethane uh, primer. Now, our urethane primer is gonna be a bit, little bit of a thicker build, and this is what we can really start to smooth out our panels with. Our epoxy, remember, is mainly just for protecting that metal and sealing our body filler in. So what the directions recommend is a 320 to 400 grit. I'm choosing a 400 and all I'm gonna do here is I don't need a guide coat, is I just wanna go over the surface to kinda give that primer something to bite onto. So I'll just go over it, it'll be a little dusty, but not too much. I'm not concerned about blocking it out, just going over the panel, smoothing out that epoxy spray. So we're ready to mix up our urethane primer now. This gets mixed up four to one. On our epoxy primer, that's one to one. So if we come here on the cup, we'll see that it has a four to one ratio, and that's right here. So we'll go up to the seven, and then we'll go up to the next seven. Get up to the next seven. Right there, and we have a properly mixed ratio. All right, so here's our urethane primer. Now they'll recommend two to three coats and uh, we wanna wait maybe a half hour before the first coat. And then you can go from there. Just use your best judgment, but about 20 to 30 minutes between coats. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pour it in. Pour the whole amount. Now you need, you need to wear your mask. I didn't wear mine when we did the epoxy, but it is important. There still are fumes that are in the air. So make sure you wear your mask.
So I just laid the two coats of the urethane primer and it is drying now. It actually looks really good. It lays out a lot smoother than the epoxy and I'm hoping it's gonna sand a little bit smoother as well. So we're back here after the next day now. They say with the urethane primer, you only need four hours for it to dry, not four days like the epoxy. Now I'm gonna show you in this area right here, it's a little rough and that's due to user error. The instructions say only use the amount of primer that you can roll on within 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, it starts to kind of gum up and get a little chunky and that's kind of what you see here but not a problem. I'm gonna show you how we can block this out and smooth it out. So the direction state to start with a 320. I'm gonna tell you if you have a little roughness, start with a 220 and kind of knock down that coarseness and then we can move on. So if there's any evidence, if this actually builds mills of primer, take a look at the ground there. Now this is with 220. Now 220 is gonna leave it a little flatter, but it's gonna take off uh, a lot of material. So this is where you kind of want to leave it. You can still see a little bit of the guide coat. Now that's the primer underneath. That's not a problem. As long as we're not going down to Bondo or to metal. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it right here. Okay. And we're gonna hit it up with 320 and it's gonna be much easier to sand and then 400. Make sure to reapply your guide coat so that we know we're removing the 220 grit scratches. Now once more, our guide coat, and we have our 400 grit. Now what I'm gonna add is that 220 does the brunt of the work. 320, 400 is gonna be much easier to sand because we're just refining the scratch right now. Now I had my own blocks, a Dura block as well. I like it because it's a little bit flatter and it's easier on a smaller uh, area to sand out. After the 400 grit, it is smooth as butter. Now from this point, if you're taking it to the body shop or if you're gonna paint it yourself, you should probably put that urethane um, sealer over it, then your top coat. So you wanna follow your paint manufacturer's uh, TDS technical data sheet to tell you how to prepare it. Now I don't want you guys to be scared that epoxy primer is showing underneath. That is not a big deal. That's actually just showing you that you've really leveled out your finish. And I gotta say, it is very, very smooth. Now there are a couple small areas that I did go through to metal. And for this, we're actually gonna use our urethane high build. Now for epoxy, you wanna use that for metal like larger areas, but for something small like this, you can use your uh, aerosol high build urethane. Now the reason why you wanna use this on the whole car is because it simply does not have the same build as the paint that you're using with the roller. It does not have the same thickness. But for something small like this, it works just perfect. And that's it. Now for these areas, all we'll do is use a 400 crit, scuff it up, and it won't be a problem at all. We don't have to block it out because it lays much smoother than that of the roller because it has a far less build to it. Now we'll kick it in the high gear and we'll go ahead, run some 220, 320, 400 on the roof and on the trunk and see what it looks like when it's done. So to spare you some time, I just showed you the 320 and 400 only. I went ahead and did the 220 on my own. But take a look at this. This is 320 and 400 only. And look how much of it, uh, how much dust we have. That's how much build that we're seeing. Even here on the trunk, we have a lot of build. And don't worry again about these epoxy areas showing. If I run my hand over this, it is smooth as butter. Now we don't have any metal showing, but I do have a little bit of body filler showing. So once again, we're gonna use our 2K Euro urethane primer just to cover that up. 
Once the panels are cleaned off, just take a look at what we have achieved in our own home garage. A panel that has been repaired and is ready for paint. Look at the, the roof right here, it looks amazing, it feels great. Now there was work that was involved with it, but this job did not require any compressor or any sort of power tools other than the paint stripper that we plugged into the wall that we use for this fender right here. Now we did this whole job in our home garage and I am impressed with the way the primer laid. Now coming from a body shop and spraying regular primer, it will not lay as smooth as primer coming out of the gun, but for the option of not having a full compressor, paint system and all that, it is a great alternative. Now, I want you guys to really pay attention to the directions. In the directions, it will say wet sand. And you can do that, but I prefer to dry sand. When you dry sand, you can see what you're doing. It's much easier, although wet sanding will be a little bit cleaner, okay, because you won't get dust everywhere. Also pay attention to the directions because it does say four hours for that epoxy to dry. That is because that epoxy really needs to tighten up and get hard. You need to allow enough time for it to dry so it can shrink properly so you won't see those sand scratches later on. So where does this leave the project or your project from here? Well, this particular case, you can go ahead and if you're painting the car, this is ready to paint. Maybe refine a little bit more, maybe 600 or 800 depending, and you wanna make sure you're going to seal it or hand it off to a body shop from here, whatever your plans are. Go ahead and share them down below. I'd love to hear about what your restoration is or your project. You can also tag me on Instagram at paint.society. Tag me your stories. I'd love to see what you got going on. Hey, but until the next time, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next one.